What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit, bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or... Check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Back on the Boss Man Show, talking to the Cal Poly Muslim State who head coach Mike DeGeorge on the Boss Man Show. It's the head coach in the background. Coach, how you doing? Making a talk to you. Yeah, uh, doing well. Thanks for having me. No doubt, Coach. Let me ask you, man. Uh, how's it feel to get this job at Cal Poly? A uh, uh, job that you can, you can truly rebuild. Uh, coming in here, man, putting your stuff on this program, man. Yeah, it's obviously an exciting opportunity and a big challenge, and uh, I've never shied away from challenges. This will be my this is my fifth head coaching job. The previous four have all been rebuilds, and so um, you know I do like the idea of building something kind of from the ground up. And um, you know I've been able to assemble a great staff. We got a roster put together, and we're excited uh, to get to work with these guys starting this summer. And hey, coach, I'm gonna ask you this question, man, about rebuilds. Like, what about about rebuilding that you love the most? I know for me. I like to kind of get my hands on it and mold it in my own from, from a fashion. But for you, what about rebuilding really excites you and your staff about being able to go in somewhere and, you know, and put your staff on it and make it right going forward? Yeah, that's a good question. One is I'm a real culture guy. So I love being able to communicate and, and uh, talk about the things and put in place the things that really build a great culture within your program. And so that's always a really fun piece for me. I would also say that, you know, um, Seneca said, you know, expectations are the thief of joy. And so sometimes when you are in a rebuilding uh, circumstance, the expectations are so low, it's fun to build those expectations and create that expectation of winning. And, uh, you know, people always enjoy when you're doing it the first time, then once they start to expect it year in and year out. And so there, that is a fun piece for me of like uh, creating those expectations. It comes to George, I'm asking this man for you, at what point did you decide you want to get into coaching? I know I my father was a coach. I chose to go in, in the media route, not coaching route. But for you, at what point did you decide you want to get into coaching? When, it, when you kind of catch that bug to want to coach? Yeah, no, that's a great question. My dad was a coach too, and he was a he was a football coach. And so, um, you know, I really kind of fell in love with the basketball at an early age. And I always thought, you know, hey, like I'd love to do what my dad does, but uh, be able to do it 
uh, in basketball. And, and so really at about sixth grade, I kind of figured out I wasn't going to be an NBA player. And so I, my, my focus kind of shifted, even though I played through college of, uh, you know, I kind of knew that, uh, my future in basketball was not going to make any money. And so, um, you know, I, I really always wanted to get into coaching. So it's been, you know, just a great experience for me over these last, uh, 30 plus years now of being able to coach. And for you coaches of Georgia, how has the game changed in your opinion from being in so long as you have? Uh, what's what's kind of things about the game in your mind really changed for, for the better about the game that you really love so much now? Yeah, I mean, obviously analytics has played a major role. I think we all had a perception of different things that impacted the game. I mean, if you go back to like the 80s and 90s, the first pick in the draft, the NBA draft was always – like this big center, people felt like you had to have this big center in place in order to succeed. And, uh, you know, pretty much the modern game, that's really not true. They, if, they, if they're taking up space in there, it's space that, uh, you know, the defense doesn't have to work as hard to rotate. And um, so, you know, we did an analytic study of the the big West and most of them do play with a big traditional center and, you know, and in 40 per 40 minutes, they, they're averaging about six points a game. And uh, they're not impacting the game a lot, but they're chewing up a lot of minutes and a lot of space on the floor. And so, you know, we're going to play smaller. We're going to spread the floor. We re we've really embraced the modern game. We play very fast. And so, you know, we're, we're really excited about the changes of basketball. I think the game's better than it used to be. Um, it's not as physical because everybody's playing in space. If, uh, if people have been watching the NBA playoffs, it's just amazing the quality of shots teams are getting just because they spread you out so much. It's just really hard. Uh, defend the style of play, and we fully embrace that. You no know, doubt, Coach Georgia. You know, um, one one of my roles is covering the Atlanta Hawks on a basis of every day. So I see how the Hawks play is usually four out, one in with Ocon, Wolf, and Pella, Fernando. They're pretty much running a middle ball screen with Trey Young or the Jonte Murray in the four way go for a floater jumper, leg, or a strong side, weak side three. So it's very fun, and I'm wondering if the Hawks drafted Alex Sar. Uh, the guy for France, will we be playing five out? Because Sar's not really a, a role big at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see how we would play with, you know, getting a guy from France. But watch, said, watching the game now, how it is, man, it's so much fun to watch and seeing how they're doing, how they actually running, what they're not doing, how people trying to maybe hard heads or two time that screen to blitz that thing. So it's fun to watch, coach, and just watch all the strategies of the game right now. Yeah, and the game is so much faster pace and uh the ball moves so much better. You know, I loved, you know, Michael Jordan and the Bulls in the in the nineties and a uh, huge fan of that and the eighties NBA basketball. But, you know, it's just so confined into tight space and the game was so physical and they played in the half court and now it's a free flowing open game. It's just a way more entertaining game to to watch and I think play and you know, analytics speak to it's the best way to play too. Now, Coach, I ask you a quick question from last night's game. Did, did, did up three, do you foul or do you play it out? <laughs> you know, I, I'm. A, you know, it's funny to me that people always say they have like LeBron tweeted out, "I'm fouling every time." And what the analytics say is it's very situational. It kind of depends on how good a rebounding team you are because teams that foul have lost as much as they've won in that strategy because they make the first uh, two, then they miss the the third. And, or, I mean, they, they make the first and they kick the second out sometimes for a three uh, to beat teams or, you know, they get the possession back on the offensive rebound and are able to score and finish. So, you know, if you're a great rebounding team, the other team's a great three-point shooting team, I think you definitely foul in those circumstances, but it, it's also situational. And honestly, if Siakam had just handled the screen better, I think he would have been able to close that out better and, and it really came down to execution. So I don't think it's a bad strategy either way, but whatever you're doing, you got to execute it and – uh, so we tend not to foul more than we fouled in the past. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a strategy to do it both ways. Yeah, I told my friends last night, I said, hey, it's really got to be careful about how clean the catch is. So foul them and go into open motion, you still screw. So, like, yeah. you got to make sure you got to defend that catch tough, foul them right there to make sure, boom. Or if you get into open motion, you got three free throws. So you still, like, yeah, screw. And, and so honestly, like, if she, if Siaki had tried to foul him, he would have ended up shooting it, and it would have been an, a, a th three free throws anyways because he got off his body on the screening action that got him open initially. And at that stage, Siakam was kind of done. Like, he, he really wasn't going to be able to – he was either going to foul him or he was going to have to give up, you know, some kind of a look. But you got to give Jalen Brown credit, too. It was a heck of a shot. I mean, that was not an easy shot. 
So no, no doubt, coach. Uh, coach, it's funny when I talk. When I talk to my friends who are not bas- basketball people. I try to. I say, you looking at it as, as a fan. <laughs> you look at it as a, look at it not as a coach or a player. You just fight as a fan. I'm like, I might look here. If he, I just like you said, coach. If he really fouled him, he will still still have been a four point play. He went, it went in. Yeah. So like you know, like I say, you all look at it differently. I, I tell my friends outside, take a step back, look at it differently when you text my phone with your with your hot takes. You know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. Yeah, coach. And for you, man, uh, you said uh how excited for you for summertime, coach here, man, coming up here for your guys, man, to kind of give them on the court, see what see what you have. And this summer, I know a lot of about development, but it's gonna be more team stuff because you're so many new guys uh, first year on, on, on the job. So how do you kind of balance on in the workouts, team stuff versus individual drills, getting these guys better? Yeah, there certainly will be a balance of that. And, you know, we'll want to do team stuff. We, we have to implement a lot of strategies that are a little bit different than a lot of these guys have had in the past. We do have some of our guys from my school, uh, previous school coming with, and so they'll be a huge help in terms of how the style of play we want to play. So we'll have a mix of skill development uh, where we're really helping them develop the skills they need in our program, and then we'll be implementing five-on-five five concepts of, uh, you know, how effectively we want to run um, our spacing strategies and how we get in and out of actions and exits and offensive rebounding and all the things uh, that kind of make our system unique. We'll be implementing those as well. Unfortunately, we only get four hours a week on the floor in the, in the summer. So, um, you know, you got to be really efficient with your time, but it'll be a great start. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting everybody here and getting going. 100%. And you know, how much would it would be about team building too, because uh, going out after practice, because I know uh, for me, my best two years, I had rules together. We did lots of summertime. So, how much are you going to do doing team building, build a rapport, and kind of make guys become brothers early before adversity strikes? Because you know how it can be the season when things are going the wrong way. People, people can fray, but if you got that strong bond initially, you better stick together through all the heartaches of, of up and down year. Yeah. You know, we have an interesting team dynamic this year. We have about a third of our team will be uh, guys that uh, have been here and are, are no Cal Poly. About a third are coming from my previous school, and then about a third are from uh, uh, outside. So how do you take and blend those guys together and really get them to be a team? And so, you know, we have a lot of different things that we do in terms of building culture, and we just try to create a really caring environment uh, where guys are about their teammates. And uh, we are very thorough in our recruiting process to make sure we're bringing the right kind of people in. And um, like-minded people are drawn to each other. And so in the past, our teams have really – bonded uh, very quickly because uh, they are all looking for the same thing out of the team experience. And coach for you, how has it been different recruiting with this whole portal world now? Uh, not knowing a, a guy shooting teachers sometimes. So you really, really vet a young man even further and really work on that relationship even more during the season because you never know if you got to play well, you got guys hit them up during the season. So I try to recruit your own guys every day. So how is this whole new environment coaching with the portal been for you at your level now come up into Cal Poly trying to make sure these guys know that you all your staff have their back every day. Yeah, it's obviously an interesting challenge and uh, the world has changed. And I do think that the student athlete has rights and I think they were kind of denied those rights for a long time. So I do think, you know, the ability to transfer to make uh, money off of their name, image and likeness are all great changes in the game, but it's also kind of out of control right now. And somehow <laughs> Somehow it's just not in their best interest, some of the decisions that are being made. And I don't know how we manage that better so that uh, student athletes are ensuring that they are getting degrees because all of these transfers, I mean, I think when the dust settles, it's just going to be hard to imagine how many people are lost in this situation where they end up not getting a degree because they're losing credits every time they transfer. So I do think that uh, having that option is great. I think utilizing that option on a year to year basis is probably not a great decision for people. And so, um, you know, we were just really trying to get people. And one of the appeals of Cal Poly to me is it was ranked by money magazine as one of the top 30 schools in the country. And so, you know, there's just such an incredible opportunity here academically, our starting salaries here are over $80,000 a year for recent, you know, for graduates. And so, you know, they, my hope is, is that we can attract just high quality students that really value our setting and our academic experience and the culture of our team. And they'll want to stay for longer periods of time. We were able to do that at Carter Mesa. Um, and so we're hoping to be able to stay out of that world a little bit, but we understand that is part of the process. And we were certainly, uh, you know, working at that this year. And the nice thing about the transfer portal is the statistics, the amount of film, 
that you have is way better than if you're recruiting, you know, out of a junior college or out of high school. So there are some advantages to the portal in terms of really seeing guys against college level competition and having, you know, accurate stats being maintained uh, that that really give you a better picture of, uh, of of how they might fit into your program. No doubt, Coach. You know, in the Big West, man, I uh, think of a conference. Uh, one of my close friends is coaching Cal State down there. It's close, close, close. The baseball school, DJ Taylor, some of my good friends. But uh, but talk about that league, man, how tough the league is, man. Uh, you know, he's won it a few times as well. DJ has as well. But for you coming in there, man, uh, knowing uh, from Jim Les and all those guys up and down the, the coast there, man, how tough that league is to get wins every night, man. Yeah, no, we're really excited about the challenge of it. You know, it's pool league, you know, everybody but Hawaii's in California. And so, you know, there are lots of rivalries and uh, great venues to play in and great competition. And so we're really excited about the challenge of it. And, you know, for us coming from Colorado Mesa, most of our games, we had to, you know, drive over mountain passes and during through snowstorms to get <laughs> to get to games. So the travel will be a little bit easier for us. And so we're excited about that piece, too. So no doubt, 100 <laughs> percent. Coach, I can't imagine. Coach, being from Atlanta, Georgia, I can't drive a snow to save my life. <laughs> blows, blows my mind. Blows my mind. And for you, Coach, man, as you all prepare, man, uh, how cool has it been to meet, meet the community out there, Cal Poly community, uh, them supporting you, showing how much they care about basketball and want to be in your corner and help push your team to great, great, great heights by helping you all out off the court as well, as on the court. Yeah. So, you know, when my wife and I came out for the interview, I mean, the thing that really set it apart was we just were really impressed with the quality of the people and, um, you know, the, from the boosters to the administration, everybody's been incredibly supportive and, you know, we were fourth in the league last year in attendance, even though, uh, you know, we finished in last place. And so I do think the community really does support and, you know, we're a close knit community. We're kind of right between, uh, San Francisco and LA. And so, you know, we're, we're in this spot uh, where we don't have professional teams and, uh, and the, you know, the former PAC 12 schools kind of taken away from our situation. We're the biggest show in town. And so it really is a cool atmosphere uh, for us and in, in, in the big West setting. And so um, we're really excited about uh, gaining some positive momentum and, and getting the community out even more uh, as, as we're able to make progress. No doubt coach. And also, man, I'm as kids, uh, for us food places, man, I know when you kind of put together a team and, a, you know, trying to get things together, man, you in the office a lot. A lot. So what's been some cool food spots you figured out out there for your staff as you try to put this team together and schedule these games as well, which is probably another part of your job that's crazy as well, trying to get games scheduled. Yeah, scheduling has been a challenge. Uh, we do have a very challenging schedule coming. So we're playing at uh, Arizona State and uh, at Cal and Stanford and St. Mary's and San Francisco. So Scheduling will be, uh, you know, a real challenge for us, but we're excited about that as well, and it'll it'll help get us ready for league play. No doubt, well, Coach George, but thank you for your time today. I look forward to seeing you. I'll be I'll be on the road in the live period. Hope my maybe I'll see you in the live period in July. There, I'll be at different events. Hopefully, I catch you there. Hope hope to stay contact with you as well, man. If it's a show, whatever you want to come on the show, man, you're welcome to come on the show and talk football with me. I'll enjoy our chat today, man. It's very fun. All right, sounds good. Look forward to it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Coach. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus. 
on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.